Hi, I'm Kevin O'Donnell. I'm here at the beautiful Gulf Coast Ultrasound here in St. Petersburg, Florida. And today's hot tip is going to be discussing the rectus femoris muscle and tendon, including the indirect tendon. It's the most commonly injured quadriceps muscle, and it behooves the astute ultrasound physician to learn how to scan these structures. So when you're looking at the rectus femoris, I like to start a little bit of hip flexion. You can put a pillow or another bolster device underneath the thigh to do it. Um, it makes it more comfortable for the patient, actually makes it a little easier to scan. As you can see here, I am starting about the mid thigh. And what I'm looking for is the rectus femoris muscle. And of note, I'm looking in particular for this central tendon. That's what we really want to focus on. So you have the rectus femoris, the vastus lateralis, and then medially the vastus medialis. As you start to scan more proximally, really want to adjust your probe and tilt it to keep that, um, that central tendon in good focus and in good view. It's kind of a vertical laying structure. So as you scan more proximally, you, might, you have to fight anisotropy, so I recommend tilting the probe in order to visualize it. And that's really what we want to focus on as we go more proximally. Now we know that the rectus femoris attaches at the AIIS, and that's really where we're going to follow it up to. So as we scan more proximally, you're going to see the muscle is going to get a little bit more, I guess, dwindled, and then it's going to take a little bit of an oblique course right before it attaches here at the AIIS and you're going to see that right here. So I'm going to scan a little bit back and here you can see the, the AIIS uh, attachment here, the rectus femoris. Once you have that in view, you want to get that in the center of your screen and then you want to spin the probe to get it in a long axis orientation. Now you may need to play with the probe a little bit to get the best view of the insertion. It's going to be a little bit of an sagittal oblique view. And we're going to dial that in right there. And so here you can see a pretty good approximation of that rectus femoris tendon attaching at the AIIS. What you want to look for is any hypocoat changes, any thickening, obviously any anechoic clefts to suggest a tear. And really want to get that the best view as you can as it comes in and inserts there. So that's a pretty good look there at the insertion. Here again is the AIS. Here is, uh, are the fibers of that direct tendon attachment. Okay, we want to swing back into transverse view, and then you want to back off just a little bit off that AIIS. And what you're going to see here is a shadowing here, and that is not a shadowing of any structure that we just looked at. That is actually going to be another part of the tendon that's actually a little bit under-recognized, and that's called the, the indirect head. And that comes out in a lateral oblique view, so that's why you're seeing that anisotropy. In order to look for this, what you want to do is get that in view and subsequently get the end of the probe that's closest to you. You really want to dig that into the skin to try to follow that down. And sometimes you have to play a little bit with it in order to get that good view of it. And then you can start to see the, the fibers of the indirect head, rectus femoris, I'm going to go a little bit deeper here so you can get a better view of it. And really, as you can see, I'm, I'm really pressing the probe into Casey's thigh here. And what you're going to see here is this other structure that's coming down um, obliquely. You see that dark structure coming down, and that's actually going to go to the superior acetabular rim. So you want to dial that in, and there's a good view of the indirect head of the rectus femoris, which also could be injured. So a good scan of the rectus femoris origin will include both of these structures 
and you can even follow this out a, even a little bit more laterally and there's uh, the insertion there at superior acetabular rim. So that's a good view of the indirect head of the rectus femoris. So again, any good imaging of a proximal injury of the rectus femoris should include both of these views. And there's your indirect head of your rectus femoris tendon. So that is your hot tip of the day. Now you give it a try. Thank you.